In this video, we're going to walk through the steps required to successfully install Emacs 25 on Windows 10. At the time of this recording, Emacs 25.2 is the latest version available. Our first step is to download Emacs and its dependencies for Windows. Head on over to www.gnu.org slash software slash Emacs and click on the Windows button. Then choose to download from the main GNU FTP server. We scroll down to get to the latest version of Emacs which is available for download. We need to download two of the zip archives. The first is Emacs itself. You need to choose the correct file for your version of Windows. For me, that means downloading the 64-bit. We can just click the file and choose to save it. The second file contains all of the dependencies for extra functionality within Emacs 25. Again, we want the 64-bit download so we will just click it and choose to save it. Whilst the files are being downloaded, I should mention that you do not actually need the dependencies to run Emacs unless you're going to be using extra features such as GNU TLS. In general, if you're going to be downloading packages, which you most likely are, then you will need the dependencies so it's best to just grab them anyway. Now that we have the zip archives for Emacs and its dependencies downloaded, we need to extract the files contained within them. Here, you can see the downloads folder in which the zip files are contained. We can change an option in Windows Explorer by clicking View and then clicking File Name Extensions to see that these files are indeed zip files. We will begin by extracting the contents of the Emacs zip archive. To do that, we'll just right click the file and click Extract All. Now you can choose where you want to extract all of the files. I'll just extract it in the same location as the zip file itself, and I will also choose to show the extracted files once it's complete. You can see that the root directory of the extracted files is called emacs25.2-x86-64. Within the root directory we have a number of subdirectories. Let's check out what's in the bin folder. Here we can see that right now there are only 10 binaries within the folder. We'll come back here again after we've extracted the dependencies to see how many more binaries the directory contains. Let's now extract the dependencies. In this case, we need to choose to extract the files on top of the root level Emacs directory which we previously extracted. You can see here that I navigate to the directory which we extracted a few seconds ago and choose to select that folder. Whilst extracting, you may get a notice saying that a file we are trying to extract already exists within the destination. We can just go ahead and choose to replace the file within the destination. Everything will work fine. Now when we go into the bin directory, we can see that there are 218 binaries that's a whole bunch more compared to the 10 that came with the vanilla Emacs installation. That's actually all you have to do to install Emacs. We can verify that it's installed and that it works correctly by now going to the root directory of the extracted files and then going into the bin folder. Here, we scroll down all the way until we find a file called Run Emacs. This is the file we use to start Emacs. When we double click and open it, we can see that it runs and works just as we expected. We've now extracted everything we need to, and Emacs and its dependencies are completely self-contained within the root Emacs 25.2 directory. Since it's self-contained, we can just cut and paste the directory to wherever we want to store it. I usually create a folder at the root of the C drive called Emacs, and then cut and paste the directory into there. Creating a desktop shortcut for Emacs is simple. We just navigate to where we stored our root installation directory, and then from there we can go into the bin folder. Once in the binaries folder, we just scroll down until we find the file run Emacs. You can right click the file and click send to desktop. Then once the shortcut is on the desktop, we can rename it to Emacs. Double clicking it will then open up and run Emacs as we expect. And there you have it. That's how you can get Emacs installed and up and running with a desktop shortcut on Windows 10. If you want to continue exploring how you can configure Emacs on Windows even further, subscribe to be kept up to date and check out the other videos I have available on the subject.